Now, a video that has been explored in the past by many people out there on the internet is where do you apply a fragrance? How do you apply it? And what are some tips or things to avoid when applying a fragrance? Today, I'm going to provide my take of where I decide to spray a fragrance, some of the considerations. I'm looking at a variety of things here. First, quick tips. Also look at where not to spray a fragrance, then move into my overall method and what I do. And at the end, some other considerations, places that I might spray it in, just things that maybe you should consider. Now, before we jump into this video, definitely check out our Instagram, posted some great photos of different fragrance bottles, great way to get some inspiration on your next signature scent. Going to also be interacting a lot more there in the coming months. So recommend checking that out, be in the description down below. Now, first up, let's look at just some general points that I consider when spraying a fragrance. Now, when do I apply it? I usually will do it out of the shower, had some time to go about me brushing my teeth and just getting ready in the morning. And then I will apply the fragrance on the skin. So one thing I will also mention is I usually do it before I put on all my clothes for the day. Uh, this is just to avoid spraying on my clothes, but I like to just have this clean ability to easily spray uh, with my atomizer. One other point that I will say is how far away should you spray a fragrance? I would not get too close to your skin. Uh, when I do it, I'm usually around say like five to six inches away. It's enough where I can get some spread uh, with the atomizer and the spray. So it's not just all condensed alcohol and fluid. So I get a bit more of a mist, uh, but I also don't want to be too far away where I then will get, uh, just, I'll just miss the surface area, especially when I spray on my wrist, uh, because that is a bit of a tighter window that you're dealing with there. Other things that I will do potentially when spraying is double spraying on a specific pulse point or area that I want to spray the fragrance, not just one spray. Uh, I also utilize this when spraying on my wrist because I want to be maybe a little bit more selective. I will get more on my right wrist and then I'll do a quick tap and go uh, with my left wrist because I always wear a watch, but more on that in a bit. Another point here, of course, people bring up often is the idea of moisturizer. Should you apply a non-scented moisturizer, of course, non-scented being the choice, regardless of what your take is on this, but you do it before or after you spray your fragrance. Now, typically what people will say is spray after you moisturize your skin, and this is a good way to go about uh, going ahead and helping the projection and longevity of your fragrance. I have tried that. I've also tried because I saw a video with Raja Dove. He had suggested that you actually will put your moisturizer on after you spray your fragrance. Light friction, don't apply too much friction because that will allow the evaporation process to be sped up. Uh, really what's happening when you're rubbing is just speeding up with heat, that evaporation process of those uh, molecules. So don't go too heavy on that, but I've actually tried that. And since he's a master perfumer, I wanted to give it a shot. And I actually found that for certain fragrances, it, it was actually interesting to uh, sample out. So that might be another recommendation for those out there wanting to utilize moisturizer. You also can utilize things like Ambroxan an ISOE Super for other points of projection. I typically don't necessarily mess around with that too much. I usually will just reapply if I need to, uh, but those are other points of consideration to maybe think about as you're spraying your fragrance and trying to test it out. Now for a couple places that I avoid when spraying a fragrance, one is the top of the chest. This is just because I don't want to have the fragrance right underneath my nose. Uh, in most instances, just because I tend to really smell it uh, when it's evaporating uh, more easily and can allow you to go nose blind and you kind of lose a sense of how much you're actually projecting out. So it becomes a little bit harder to identify how much you really have sprayed on yourself and what other people around you are experiencing. Another area where I just always avoid is the neck, especially the front of the neck. When you're shaving as a, as a guy, this is a no brainer just because you're dealing with these small micro cuts when you shave. And if you've ever sprayed fragrance on that, it could lead, uh, just lead to a lot of irritation, ingrown hairs, nasty stuff. Don't wanna do that. Also, this is really sensitive for just how thin your skin is. The, your neck, just this amount of skin here, is very similar to like under your eyes. Like this is why these places will wrinkle so fast. So when you spray these fragrances in these areas, uh, it just adds more point of irritation. It's not going to necessarily be able to withstand that to the same degree. Probably not the best thing to be spraying on sensitive skin. So now what do I typically do for the amount of sprays? And then where do I spray? So. I will typically spray three to five times on average, depending on the fragrance. What I will do is 
For lighter fragrances, maybe go closer to five, if not maybe a bit more, but then for something that's more dense, it's say like an oud or a heavy tobacco fragrance, an amber, go more towards the three. I'm also thinking about where I'm going, what's the environment. If I'm going to be in close quarters, I will definitely go lighter on the spray. So it's all case by case with different fragrances and I would recommend testing it out and seeing what it is. Also, don't take your own word for it. One thing I will do is I will spray a fragrance and then maybe get an opinion of somebody else. I'll go do it in another room, then I'll come in, I'll be like, hey, how do I smell? And then if people can smell it right away, that's a good indicator and people, especially get people that are honest with you about, hey, a little bit too much, buddy. So try your best, get those data points in terms of what is the appropriate amount for different genres of fragrances or even bottles if you have a smaller collection. So with those three to five sprays, where do I typically spray? For three sprays, the three places I always will typically spray my fragrance are on the pulse points of my wrist. What I will do depending on, because I wear a watch on my left wrist, sometimes what I'll do if I don't spray on each wrist, I will then go two on the right wrist, do a quick tap and go, don't add a ton of friction, but just enough where I have almost like an oversaturation on my right wrist and then I can just apply and be more precise with what I'm doing on my left wrist. I get a really good projection off of that. Another place that I will always spray is on the back of my neck, usually on the lower back of my neck. So it's actually kind of towards the upper back, uh, below my hairline. This is a great way to kind of get that scent trail. And it also gets out of the pocket of my nose so I'm not just gassing myself out. And then for four and five, another place that I will go is I want to get it farther away from my neck, but closer to my shoulder, right in that collarbone, underneath the collarbone area and trying to spray there on both sides just quickly. One, two, I'm wearing a collared shirt here, so sometimes not always the place that I will go. This does also depend on attire. I've also, with short sleeve shirts, sprayed in between the elbow. Sometimes I've had some good success with that uh, as another place to spray. I wanna keep it more on my arms rather than up here. So it's case by case, but I would say for the true three that I'm going for, usually wrists are always exposed. I will go there and then the back of my neck uh, before I put on my clothes. Uh, that is usually the other place that I will then spray. A couple other places that I think we have to talk about are just clothes. Now, if I'm wearing formal attire, anything nice, a nice suit, a nice jacket, uh, also looking at like a nice shirt, I'm not gonna go anywhere near that with spraying it. I don't want any risk of a stain. I think the best clothes to spray on if you are gonna sample that out are going to be with things like scarves, a knitwear especially, so if you have a nice sweater, this is a great thing to spray on. Denim, so if you have like a denim jacket or you know even on your pants, like I've seen people spray behind the knee and things of that sort and allows it to kind of rise up and can also leave a nice scent trail. Uh, denim, these denser types of fabrics are absolutely the place to spray your fragrances on the clothes. Most clothes that I own, I'm not gonna spray it on it. I don't wanna stain it. And it's just not something I wanna go for. It's typically those colder months, if I have a nice jacket, scarf, other sweaters, knitwear, that's I think the best place to spray on clothes. And then one final place, this is not for projection or for those around you, but just for your own enjoyment of the fragrance. I like to actually spray sometimes on the back of my hand. If I want to smell it for myself, if I know I'm gonna be in a public environment, I don't wanna be a straight weirdo going like this. I mean, I don't know. I just kind of have in this inside the wrist thing that's I think can scare some people away. I want something more inconspicuous. You know, maybe you do a little bit on the outside of the hand on the right there, and then you have them, you know, your hand up to your mouth, something of this sort you're just smelling this way. Maybe you're just thinking, nobody knows, but then you're smelling your fragrance. So that's another place that I will spray if I just want to give myself a point of enjoyment in the fragrance. Of course, when you wash your hands, this is going to go away, but I find for the first couple of hours when you're going about your day, this is a great way to get a sense of how this fragrance is going to smell without drawing attention to yourself. But all right guys, that is my method and routine when it comes to spraying fragrances, other points also that I've come across. This is just my take. I know many people have their own methods for this. So love to see comments down below. What have you found helpful when it comes to spraying your fragrance. If you found this video helpful or if you enjoyed it, definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Would appreciate that. But guys, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.